A warm welcome to your Barbados Today evening news update for Friday, February 19. A 60-year-old man and a 93-year-old woman lost their fight to COVID-19, bringing the death toll to 31. According to the COVID Communications Unit, the 60-year-old man, who had underlying conditions, was a patient at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility for a month and spent his last 18 days on a ventilator. The elderly woman, who also had comorbidities, died at Enmore on Thursday night. Health Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick expressed condolences to both families and urged Barbadians to get vaccinated to safeguard against serious forms of COVID-19, which result in hospitalization. Today, there were long lines at vaccination centers as Barbadians took up the opportunity to get the AstraZeneca vaccine. At the West Terrace Primary School, the queue snaked well past the gate and some told Barbados today the system should be improved to avoid the long wait. Not very nice to talk as I leave and went home, had some fruits and some water and came back. And, you know, that's it. So what like, recommendation would you have? I personally feel that they should have some kind of ticketing system that you could give the person a ticket and they could go and cool it underneath the trees there okay. until you're ready. We have people that sit down in chairs and all that kind of thing across the road, you know. And I personally don't feel that's good enough. I'm here to get a vaccine because I do a lot of traveling and I feel it's worth, worth, worth while getting it. So I'm proud to be here in the line stand up for three hours only. Three hours? Yeah. Yeah, where well, they could come a bit more earlier. The need to have some alphabetical system. From A to thing, we will do your thing. From that to that, so that the whole the country don't turn up. So this, that's what it is. And, and persons that are over 70, you know, they're, they're in the line, line for three hours. That's not fair, especially some that got challenges in the hot sun. So if they do the, as he said, the, as we best is order. You would know uh, that you can't yeah. do, do yes, you can. You show it then? Okay. And we'll cut down the large crowd. And the long lines. And then yesterday they start early because they run out of the stuff. And they, they can have any gang today if they don't sign for supplies. I was here from 8.30. Uh, I really think that uh, the way it deserves it because um, we want to get rid of this virus. And to get rid of this virus, to, to make people more secure, being among each other, is to have the vaccine. I know it's a long way. I know that everything, patience is about the, the main um, optive word at the present moment. So everyone here has to be patient. One of the things I think though, is that the older folks who are who uh, have ailments, um, diabetes, high blood pressure, stuff like that. I believe that someone from the inside, I don't know if it can happen, should be seeking out, looking, a nurse could pass and see these people, uh, pull them out the line and let them be inside uh, first. However, co-coordinator of the National COVID-19 Vaccination Campaign, Major David Clark, told Barbados Today some people have been turning up at centres without appointments and this slowed down the process. When I was able to go there, I was able to explain to people that we're only doing people 70 years and up and we're doing according to category. So the first category was 70 years, well, the first category was frontline workers, next category was 70 years and up. The next category is for people with chronic non communicable diseases who are approved by the uh, medical committee from 18 to 69. And so we are we vaccinated people by category. Uh, but lots of people have been jumping the gun. And so when you register, if you notice that the two things that came up for registration, one says 70 years and older, and the other one says 16, 18 to 69 with chronic non people diseases. So you have to wait until your slot comes when you can register for your particular age group. In other news, Operation Seek and Save will end tomorrow, and according to the man in charge, Dr. Dion Greenwich, it has been a success. The initiative was aimed at identifying persons who may be infected with COVID-19. Dr. Greenwich told Barbados today they reached 80,528 households today. We were able, as everyone knows, to, to find persons who are in need of, of, of assistance. 
you know, we, we did, we dealt with two areas, COVID and, 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 and then, then, it, then just dengue. So, so all, you know, we, we, we were able to identify the risk factors as it relates to the COVID and, and for example, in any environmental factors in a particular area that, that, that are in need of follow up. You know, so, so, there's, so there's good information, there's quality information and data that, that, that I'm sure the government is, is intending to use to, to make effective intervention as, as it relates to, to COVID, um, as it relates to, to, to dengue and, 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 and some NCD information as well. Don't panic, Labour and Social Relations Minister Colin Jordan tells business owners to hold tight and keep their heads on despite the lockdown. While he knows that the current climate is tense and things are tough, now is not the time, he says, to give in to despair. There is that fear on the, on the part of, of employers as well. And what has been happening, and that's what Prime Minister keeps saying, and I keep asking people, just keep your head, keep your head on. Because if employers panic and workers panic, the outcome will never be good. Because it, it'd be like everybody almost, you know, the drawing man catching the straw. Mm. So it, it, it'd just be a slap in the room and, and people will drown in a situation like that. So we're asking people to keep their heads, but we, we recognize that the climate is tense. And the climate is tense because it's fear all around, fear on all sides, and I have to salute the workers because workers continue to work even in spite of the fears that they have. There's regional and international news after this short break. Regional News Now, Jamaican authorities are yet to provide a comprehensive update on the data breach on the Jam COVID website, which exposed confidential information of thousands of people. We get the details from Television Jamaica. It was a scare for most Jamaicans and more travelers when it was revealed earlier this week that there was a data breach on the government's Jam COVID website. The website and app, built by the Amber Group, stored immigration records and COVID-19 test results for hundreds of thousands of travelers who visited Jamaica since June last year following the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. The website was used for people seeking travel authorization to enter the island. Among the details that would be needed is signature, identification, and passport number. After identifying the breach, the National Security Ministry said an investigation was launched. According to U.S. online newspaper TechCrunch, the Jam COVID server contained more than 70,000 negative COVID-19 lab results and over 425,000 immigration documents authorizing travel to the island, which included the traveler's name, date of birth, and passport numbers. Health Minister Dr. Dr. Christopher Tufton was pressed on Thursday to talk about the issue. However, he was tight-lipped. Further afield, the world's richest countries on Friday boost their commitment to a COVID-19 vaccination program for poorer countries. The leaders of Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom and the U.S. are holding virtual talks on Friday to discuss, among other topics, how to speed up the rollout of vaccinations against the novel coronavirus. The EU and the U.S. both announced that they're doubling their initial contribution to the World Health Organization's COVAX program. We don't have a precise number. As you say, the UK said that it will donate most of its surplus, but yes, how much is that? Now, the UK has more than 400 million doses uh, on order in total. Some of them have already, of course, arrived, been put into uh, people's arms. Contrast that with the population of just 66 million people. So you could be talking about a donation, perhaps, 
in the 100 to 200 million mark. Although, of course, there is, that doesn't account for the potential need for perhaps booster doses of the vaccine as winter of this year uh, approaches. But we haven't got details on timing, it has to be said, either. The UK obviously is a lot further ahead than some countries. Uh, it is said that it could have uh, all its adults uh, have at least offered a vaccine by September, although some uh, number of crunchers here think that with the pace going as it is, that could actually be achieved much sooner than that. But the UK is also talking about timing in the G7 meeting today and seeking to get an agreement, a way forward to find a, another way also to speed up the development of vaccines. Boris Johnson seems to think that that could be cut to just 100 days. We'll see how far he gets with that. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.